If you're new here, we're Liz and Dennis, and right now we're on an epic road trip across Iceland's famous Ring Road with our friends Ruth, Rob, and Javi. The start of the trip has been incredible. We've cooked our lunch in a boiling lake shore, soaked in hot pools, enjoyed the coastal shores of South Iceland, visited several stunning waterfalls, and now we're making our way east, where the adventure continues. We just saw a seal! It's incredible. <laughs> we're on a glacier right now, and we're about to go in a crevasse. Whoa! What is my life? This is probably going to be my highlight right here. If there's one thing you do when you're in Iceland, it's play on ice. Today we are gonna go on a glacier walk and ice cave tour with Icelandic mountain guides. We've partnered with them to go on a four hour experience and I am next level pumped. Look at the glacier we're going on, it's yeah, huge. Buddy. It's raining and I don't even care because it's gonna be a major adventure. We got our crampons, we got our ice axes, ice axes, I don't even know what they're ice called. Axes. It's gonna be a good time, guys. Let's do it. Iceland is home to 269 named glaciers, covering roughly 11% of the country's landmass, with unbelievably beautiful ice formations. Glaciers are formed by continuous accumulation and compression of snowfall over thousands of years. Each year, fresh powder falls, melts, and refreezes. The weight compresses oxygen out of the previous layers, eventually forming crystal clear ice that can bend sunlight. Our glacier walk started on what appeared to be a muddy dirt hill, but to our surprise was actually part of the glacier. Glaciers are constantly on the move. As they melt and reform, they actually slide down the mountain toward the sea. Their immense weight carves into the surrounding stone, slowly grinding down the mountain and turning it into sand. Lacing our crampons to our boots, we continued up the glacier. Our guide Antoine blazed the trail for us, carving steps into the ice for a safer passage. Our excitement kept us from feeling the extra weight in our feet, but a quick rest stop and taste of fresh glacial water was very welcome. Sun is out. So glad it's not raining though. Like this is literally couldn't be better. The weather is definitely uh, treating us. I'm loving this so much. We've jumped over crevasses. We're learning so much about the landscape of Iceland and how glaciers are formed. Our guide is so funny. Do you have any ID on average? There's a percentage of empty space in a snowflake. Thank you, yes. Say 70%. 70%. Well done! Okay, we came out of our head like this. 70% indeed. This one, not counting the bubble, 7% or less. Right now he is exploring a crevasse, so hopefully we can go down there ourselves, I think. Which would be so fun. It's like a, a very adrenaline rush activity, but it feels very safe as we're doing it. And it is just epic. Like, we're on a glacier right now, and we're about to go in a crevasse. What is my life? We're gonna go rappelling. I've never rappelled before, but we have done some crazy shiz in Colorado, which was like via Ferrata, which is like rock climbing. So I got this. Yeah. This is crazy. Oh, oh my God. That was badass. <laughs> the rappelling was super fun. Thinking about it as I was taking pictures of everyone going down and then watching them climb up, I was kind of nervous. I was like, dude, this is gonna be hard. 
But as long as you follow Antoine's directions, like to the T, it was just like climbing up a step ladder. It was so cool. The color and the ice formations inside the crevasse were awesome. Like you have to come and do this if you come to Iceland, because if you don't, you're missing a huge piece of what Iceland is all about. Definitely book your tour with Icelandic mountain guides. They have all different lengths of tours from two to like six hours. We suggest taking no less than a four hour tour because this was so immersive. This is probably gonna be my highlight right here. Like repelling on a glacier. The heck man. Jokursalon Lagoon is the deepest lake in Iceland, and by far the most popular glacial lagoon in the country. The lagoon sits at the base of Europe's largest glacier. Despite the lake's massive size, it's actually quite young, forming in 1934 as the glacier began to recede. Visitors can explore the lagoon on a guided boat tour, getting up close and personal to the towering icebergs resting in the water, or taking the views along the shore trail like we did. There was virtually no one there when we visited. It was so quiet, we could hear seals taking breaths of air and chunks of icebergs cracking off, crashing into the water. It truly was one of the most beautiful and peaceful places we've ever visited. a seal! I see it like doing its little thing in the water. So cute. I'm praying it comes back maybe like just like flops on a glacier. That would be amazing. It's incredible. Out by a glacial lake. Did you like my song? I think this might be the best view I've ever cooked breakfast in front of. We're right next to a glacial lake. There's like huge mountains and glaciers everywhere. It is incredible. This morning's breakfast, ooh, there's a hare. Hmm. Fan life. <laughs> salmon, egg salmon, a little bit of cheese, Icelandic butter with sea salt. Across the road from the glacial lagoon is a stretch of black sand many call Diamond Beach because of the wave-polished icebergs that line the jet black shore. Icebergs from the lagoon are carried out to sea, where the powerful North Atlantic waves polish the broken pieces, making them appear like diamonds glistening in the sun. Their contrast with the sand makes you feel like you're in another dimension. Being able to touch and admire these ancient ice formations See the different colors, textures, and shapes was truly magical. We were thankful to be able to get close enough to admire the artful details of nature's beauty. You know, Diamond Beach was rad, but I still personally think that the Glacier Lake is the showstopper. We got like a six hour drive day, not counting the time we're gonna spend at each stop. So caffeinate, prepare yourself, let's go.
The drive through the East Fjords was one of the most scenic drives we've ever done. We went over incredible mountain passes, winded up and down the coastal fjords, saw dozens of waterfalls, and made time to stop at several scenic overlooks, taking in the beauty. longest tunnel I think in the history of tunnels we have never been in a tunnel this long and I think it's in the mountain with like geothermal or steam all over the window and stuff it's crazy but it blows my mind that this is even exists like someone created this someone dug a tunnel through a mountain for you yes <laughs> and a massive one at that it just blows my mind okay oh my heavens almighty good <laughs> oh my god. I'm already nervous about being in a tunnel that's this long. It's like I don't like the steam and the darkness and we're in a tunnel driving forever. Someone pulls out in front of me, my stomach is turning. Oh, I see light. You see light? I see light! Hey. Hey. I just instantly feel better though. Like instantly. <laughs> well, if you're coming through the East Fjords, be ready for the wildest tunnel ride of your life. I mean, I can't say that because I, I haven't lived your life, but it's a wild one. We're going to a special canyon I have on my bucket list, but we are on a unpaved road and she's bumpy and we are high in the mountains. Woo! 30. I'm going 25. <laughs> Today was a super long drive, but I am pooped. We had to change our plans completely because this took way longer than we ever expected. And we didn't even make it to the destination we tried to. The good news is there's a campground there. So we are like almost there, almost eight o'clock, and we left, including a few stops at like, no joke, 7.30 a.m. Beautiful though, isn't it? It's so cold here. We're in the middle of nowhere because we're so high up in elevation. So it's gonna snow tonight. <laughs> it's gonna be 25 least... degrees in the morning with 25 mile per hour winds. Ooh, boy. I mean, like, I know it's Iceland, which it'll probably be an amazing experience. Every time it snows, I always get so excited. And we have, like, legit gear. Do we have a little Bosto heater in the van? Like, we'll be fine. I just don't think I was mentally prepared for snow. Yay! There they are. There's the boys. The boys and the girls. <laughs> I cannot imagine being in a tent. There's tent campers here right now. Strong bunch you are. I need my lattes in the morning and a heater. So, uh, thanks, happy campers. Eats my skin. Let's do this. Feel it coming in. Golden. Stulaj Canyon is one of the newer natural wonders of Iceland. Just a few years ago, the canyon was completely submerged underwater. That was until a dam was built, which caused the water to recede, revealing what is now the largest concentration of basalt columns in Iceland. These columns are formed when lava flows and cools slowly, causing the land to shrink and crack into symmetrical patterns, eventually forming columns. On one side of the canyon, you can hike down to the river, getting up close and personal to the columns. But given the weather that morning, we decided to explore from the campsite overlook instead. Gold hair, gold rings. <laughs> this is crazy, it is snowing so intensely right now. This gorge is beautiful. Definitely worth the long drive to get out here. At the base of the canyon trail on the other side is a waterfall flowing directly over the towering basalt columns. It was one of the most unique waterfalls we've ever witnessed. And the best part was we had the entire place to ourselves. Oh, you hit me! You hit me! This 
detour was totally worth it. Waking up to the snow this morning was such a treat. The basalt column canyon and the waterfall was epic, but the adventure does not stop here. We're gonna continue heading north along the ring road and Iceland has so much more to show us and you. So stay tuned for next week's video. I'm already driving like a grandma. I'm like 10, 10 mile or kilometers per hour below the speed limit. It's like me, me. That one wasn't bad. That one wasn't bad. It's when the guy almost came out of nowhere. Hey! Hi, friends. They're focused. Yeah. Okay, keep your eyes on the road, please. I was avoiding a bigger pothole. A bigger pothole than yeah, that one? Yeah, a bigger pothole on uh -oh. that side. Thank you. Dennis has a little bit of a um, side seat driver. That's Dennis for sure.